open. It's the okay. Hang on, I need to see if I'm going now. Abort! Abort the mission! All oh, right, hang on. I was hoping to check to see. I think I'm streaming now, but let, let me double check. Click to unmute. No, very bad. Well, actually, I can on this machine because there's no sound. Uh, and here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Infinity effect. And there's like a four second delay, I don't know why, but there usually is. In any case, hello and welcome to the stream. Today we have some uh, exciting stuff planned. Um, now I meant, uh, that was going to be a joke, I was say, today I have some exciting stuff planned, but first the stream. But actually this is interesting for me, so who cares. Um, it turns out the Heliaco Rising program we did earlier has a mistake in it. Uh, now the first thing to do when you find a mistake in your own code is to immediately announce it, not because uh, you know, you're a good person or not because someone might be using it and, you know, you don't want them to screw it over. That, those two things are perfectly fine. But more for uh, like a CI CYA purpose, if somebody else finds an error in my program um, and they post it and I say, oh, I knew about it and I was working to fix it, they'll say, yeah, right, why didn't you post it? So I've posted it now. I've got the first post in here. Anything anyone else says, I can say I knew about it and I was working on it. And I don't have to ever actually work on it. Um, I'm hoping to quote unquote fix this soon. The cool thing is I'd never have to. 100 years could go by, don't fix it, but I knew about it so I win. So that is my attitude towards that. Let's see what this message is, I'm just curious. Oh, um, okay, that's a different post, okay. So what is the problem here that we're having? Well, um, let's see if we can find our replet for this. Oh good, we do, we can. Uh, I'm always surprised when things work out. All right, so the one thing we're doing here, we're doing a binary search at one point uh, to see when a certain value is, is zero. And I think it's in here in the main body of the program. I'll find Heliacal date. And um, here it is. Uh, we're searching for this function that effectively tells us the difference between the sun's rise time and the given star's rise time. Uh, one bad thing we don't do is we don't bother to check the return value. We sort of just assume whatever temp2 is given to us will have g of temp2 equal to zero, or you know, very close to zero. Um, that's bad thing number one. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Uh, I'm not gonna actually fix it now for other reasons. Um, okay, so that's one bad thing. Um, so when, when could this ac actually happen? Well, the assumption I made here is that even though I think it was implicit, is that the function g, the function f, and therefore the function g, are steadily increasing between 0 and 366. And the reason I believe that is because the sun's right ascension actually does increase every day. It increases by roughly four minutes per day, uh, so it makes a 24-hour cycle in 365 days. Uh, but it sometimes increases less, sometimes increases more because of the equation of time. Um, the problem is the time of sunrise and sunset at a given latitude depend on the latitude. So it's quite possible in, for example, near the equinox, that you live at a location, or there is a location, uh, where the, uh, the length of day is getting very long very quickly, could like increase by an hour in a day. In that case, the sunrise time, roughly speaking, could increase 30 minutes. Uh, sorry, I meant to say decrease 30 minutes, because the day is getting longer, the sun rises earlier, sets later. And then, even though the sun is rising now uh, four sidereal minutes earlier, uh, sorry, um, yeah, even though the sun's right ascension has increased, uh, its difference from the rise time of the star, uh, oh it's, it's actually, it's, it's, its rise time has changed by more than four minutes and is now going sort of in the wrong direction. We expect it to increase, but it's actually decreased. So that is the issue. Um, how are we gonna fix it? Well, if we were on a production schedule, there would be several good ways to fix it. And I do need to mention one of these. Um, uh, another sort of bad thing we are doing here, which we knew when we did it, we do have the binary search returning um, a string that's like an error message that says, hey, invalid binary search. Uh, right there. Mine's 80, right, right here. <coughs> well, that's a console log, and then it returns it. But we don't use it. If we, if we get it, we don't, we don't actually look to see if we got bad binary search, or in fact, if we got, what we got back was even a, a letter, uh, was even a number instead of a string. So we do need to check that, and you know, if that happens, we'll say, well, it's best to tell the user something screwed up, but what we do now is we give the user false results, which is, which is worse than just giving an error message. 
So those are the two big things here. Uh, we can check to see what the return value actually is, and it, it actually satisfies the conditions we want. And second, if for whatever reason binary search is returning something that's not good, um, we need a similar test, which we can actually probably merge it with this other test that we're going to write uh, that says, hey, what, you know, something's gone wrong. Uh, so don't, don't rely on this. I do have a plan to fix this. It's going to be, it's going to slow the program down slightly, but not a great deal. Uh, it is going to allow for multiple cases where the, the function is a zero. Um, but before we do all that, let's see what the actual problem is. Let's, um, uh, and again, if you were in a production environment, this would be the step you would not take. You do not want to make pretty graphs out of uh, things if you know how to solve the problem already. So this is a this is a backward step, but I'm a backwards person. I'm a Barbie girl. No, I'm not a Barbie girl. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to. I might write a different. Um, I might write a different file for this. What we're going to do here is we're going to look. Uh, we're going to try to graph something. We're going to try to graph the function that represents the sun's right ascension, and then its rising and setting times in in right ascension at various latitudes we will see that it is not always a completely increasing function, but we may get the added benefit of seeing exactly how high in latitude you have to be before you can get this weird double heliacal rising. We might even find a place where, you know, a given star and the sun uh, kind of rise at the same time for several days, or a, sun, a star rises at twilight for several days. Now when the moon does that, when the moon, the moon usually rises 50 minutes later every day on average. Um, but it really depends on the sun and the moon. It depends on the moon's um, uh, it depends on the moon's um, blah, 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 position in the sky, right ascension declination. Uh, during during the, uh, the su uh, you know during the vernal no the fall equin autumnal equinox, um, there's a time I think it's called the harvest moon when the moon only rises about twenty day twenty minutes later every day or something like that. Um, and it, depending on your um, latitude, it could even rise earlier or very nearly the same time. And presumably that's a good thing because it lets you work uh, after the sun is set because it's, you know, it's a full moon, full harvest moon, whatever. And so you get a little bit extra time there uh, while the, it's still twilight, the full moon is rising. Um, so this is sort of could be like that uh, except for stars, which move much more predictably, but this issue still arises. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be the totally pointless um, creating a new file. Um, um, and we're going to call it graph error, which kind of gives you the idea of what we're, we're aiming for here. We're going to try to graph the error. Um, and I was originally going to try doing this using just uh, HTML and, well, HTML and JavaScript using a Canvas ID. But everybody likes the uh, programming library d3.js. Uh, if anybody does not like the programming library D3.js, you may speak up in chat. Uh, but I don't can ignore you, but you can still do it. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get D3 installed here and then see if we can get, you know, I don't know how sophisticated D3 is. I know it can, if you give it a bunch of points, it can probably plot a, a graph. That's probably not a huge, great thing to happen. But if you can, can you give it a function and have it plot a graph? Of course, it could just take points on the function and plot those. But some more intelligent graphing programs, Mathematica, for example, actually look at the nature of the function you're plotting, and they try to be take more samples of the function where it's changing quickly so they can draw a more accurate graph. I'm probably expecting too much of D3 to do that, but it's probably also not going to be really necessary for us. We, it's just something, we, uh, just something I'm curious about. So the package we're going to add here is D3. And um, there's a whole bunch of shit, shit here. Okay, and we're going to follow our standard procedure of not uh, calling it from the remote because we want to create a standalone application. So somewhere in here they've added a, there it is, uh, D3min. Okay, we want to sort of call it locally. So what we're going to do here is we're going to download it. And, okay, and we're going to download it. In, oh, actually, that's a good question. Where are we going to download it? I think we can download it. Heliacal without breaking anything. Because um, this is a production app now. But downloading a JavaScript file and not re referencing it is probably not going to kill. Whoa. Yeah, that was. That's um, 
All right, I think this is an issue of you can't, you have to use the, there's sort of two, um, uh -huh. there's sort of two different uh, clipboards here. And this one is being a pain in the ass. And this one is different from the X11 clipboard. So pasting here doesn't necessarily mean I can paste it to an X term. I can do this, and I'm hoping just by doing that I can do this now. Ta-da! I'm so smart. Okay. And then we do want to upload this to, of course, um, to Replit. Let's go ahead and do that now. Um, nope, d3.min.js. Whoops. You. And we will include it, but of course we need to change this script source. Oh, actually we can just change this script source to include d3.min. So again, the reason to do this is because when we uh, export it to Google uh, to GitHub Pages, we want it to be a standalone application. Okay, fantastic. Uh, now that we've done this, we still haven't actually done anything interesting yet. Um, somewhere here includes script. Do I include, oh, I have to include script after we define the thing script is going to look at. So here's another script that randomizes this crap. Then I do the <laughs> So we'll just put this way at the end. So the script source here is going to be what I just forgot, graph error.js. Uh, and we'll just do this. And now the program. The program should run. Um, I'm just not sure we need to include stars and bright uh, with stars and cities in this one. Uh, or even um, all that other stuff we're including. Because they do take up a little bit of time and they don't add anything to what we're about to do. But maybe I don't care. Maybe, maybe I, I care, but I care later. Okay, so right now graph error is pretty empty. Um, I guess the first thing we need to do is, I have no idea how to work graph uh, D3. I'm a freaking moron. Uh, but you knew that. So let's go ahead and get D3 tutorial maybe. Um, actually, I have worked with it a little before, so I'm kind of lying. Um, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of um, documentation back in the olden days, whoa, uh, advertises the program to tell you how wonderful it is. Um, and unfortunately, that, that sort of bled over into some open source projects. So they don't want to actually tell you how to use the program, or maybe they do, but some of them don't. They just want to tell you how f what fantastic things you could do with it if you ever got around to learning it, but they won't let you learn it. They don't really want you to learn it. They don't care about that part. Okay, I'm going to skip, go ahead and skip this uh, Pomodoro. Uh, because it is the first one, um, but the next ones after this, every 20 minutes I'm going to get up and walk around, and you will be abandoned for a little while. Okay, um, I wouldn't call that tedious, but alrighty. Uh, let's see, so this is kind of like jQuery, actually. Um, okay. Um, okay, so unfortunately, oh, let's, yeah, let's go and read some tutorials. Our goal here is to graph a function uh, somewhere. We probably need to create a place to put the function even before we do anything else, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, let's go ahead and put it here after the script sources, but before uh, any of this HTML that we have here. And we will use our extremely original uh, naming scheme of calling this graph. And I guess we put quotation marks here because we're in HTML. So this is where we're going to put the graph. I mean, assuming this works, which of course it can't. Uh, it's actually literally impossible. Um, so far this actually looks... Did I actually jump over something? I might have. Uh, let me go ahead and close up the stuff we're not using. We will get back to Constellation Boundaries later, which means we may never get back to Constellation Boundaries because I just like saying stuff. Okay, come on. For just a second I thought, hey, that's a pretty cool looking git, but I realized it's my git. So, gits can be deceptive. They can look really... Why am I looking for... Oh yeah, Cairo. Um, this replet, Heliacal, 
is a correct word. I should. I probably should have actually updated that to be um, my my dictionary. All right, this replet is is not what we want. Uh, sorry, I'm just cleaning up, and you will have to deal with it. Okay. All right. So let's start with a simple no. No freaking video tutorials. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, so this is, this is, um, uh, okay. 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 I'm looking for this, like, super cool example here. Um, okay, let's go ahead and use this example that just doesn't do anything useful. But then again, code doesn't do anything useful, man. Fight the system. All right. So D3, select, um, we're going to just select our graph thingy and change its background. To What's interesting is this might not do anything because the div has no size right now. Um, so, I don't know if we can make a div with this. Well, I'm sure we can. But anyway, let's, let's, let's pretend that worked. It didn't break anything. Um, yeah. Okay, guess if we do this, we can... Um, all right, well, let's see if we can change its HTML using this chaining method. Uh, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, JavaScript also uses, but they usually require... Um, is it me? I was not going to finish that, though. So play. Okay, that either didn't work or I'm doing it wrong. Um, okay. So bad things are already happening. It's possible the HTML thing has to come right after the um, the selection of the uh, of the so select graph dot HTML hello hell hell is fine so I feel this this that ooh okay oops that's not a stuff that's okay this so it runs but it doesn't appear to do anything. And perhaps more importantly for us, we have too much crap here. So now I'm going to get sick of this. I'm going to just copy index.html, which I think I can do. Nope. Uh, there's more than one way to do this, but um, the cut and paste would basically work. I'm going to download a zip before I make everything crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm create a new file called index old html and then I will cut and paste index.html into it and then I will modify index.html see how brilliantly that works see how brilliantly I forget where I put the old crap okay there you go now we can edit index.html um, pretty much the way we want it to be okay so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that um, blah 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 Okay, we do need that style sheet because we are we may still use jQuery. We still need my libraries because they're wonderful. We do not need solar lunar uh interp oh actually we do, hang on. I'm sorry, we're testing with solar, so we do need that one. Um we do not need lunar interpretation. We do not big big cities and big stars are the big win we're gonna get here because those are large files and they have to load stuff in. Uh none of this crap. We already have a div ID. Blah blah blah. We don't need to do this with other fields. We probably don't need listen.js because we're not really going to be listening for anything. And then we do need, of course, graph error is going to be the big, the big winner here. Okay, so that's correct. Nothing is happening. Um, not super happy with that though. Hang on, let's see. I'm going to put something here myself. Okay, good. And now I should be able to style. Okay. Now I should be able to change the style of this too. Interestingly, it already has color black and background 
white. So that brilliantly, those exact choice of colors uh, do not change anything. So let's see if this changes anything. Okay, not happy. Um, am I selecting the wrong thing? Am I, is, am, I, am I applying this all to like a null thing here? Let's find our friend console log. D3. Oh, well, one bad thing I'm definitely doing. Wait. Actually, hang on. I probably shouldn't be using uh, double quotes here anyway, but let's, let's see what's going on here. I don't know. That, that's good, bad, something, evil. I don't know. Um, and it might be because graph is not, of course, at the top level. It's a, it's a child of the top level. So maybe I need to be a little bit more careful in how I choose it. Um, um, descend into select section. So they're actually doing a lot of this stuff, um, creating their own div elements. Uh, interestingly, they don't name their own div elements. Well, let's try it with body. I mean, that, that, that's a simpler test. So this was from the entire body, um, the hideous color. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, I probably should have done it to the actual code that actually does something. Shiny and ugly. Okay, so I guess to select graph, would I do, like, the jQuery thing? I don't think this is even correct. But it is. Awesome possum. Um, and I also now my div tag goes all the way to the right. Okay, cool. So now that we fixed it, let's break it. Let's not put anything in the div tag. And let's set the value from, from here. So after we've done all that, I'm just going to leave it there. Yes, very nice. Okay, I mean, not really very nice. jQuery could have probably done this. I could have probably done this. Uh, but nice in the sense we're actually getting somewhere in the tutorial. Okay. Motherfucker. I have no idea. I hate, I'm not really into CSS. But we might need to use it. Let's see. Oh my god. Okay, I'm assuming this is the bad way of doing it, and we're not going to do it that, uh, like that. Okay. Let's see if we can boogie with this. Select, not chart, but graph. Because we're putting everything there. Data is going to be the guy on Star Trek. <laughs> I'm so funny. Enter. Oh, wow. So this is going to create a, a chart by making multiple divs. Ouch. Hmm. So that's actually pretty ugly. So in this case, it actually does need to create its own divs to do this. So I cannot, um, I could not have altered it like that. I'm trying to do Control-Z to see if I can get back. There we go. Uh, so here we actually do need that select all div. One, two, three, seven, eight. Um. Hmm. This might be problematic because I changed the freaking, um... I wonder if I can do this. I probably can't comment out this whole existence, can I? Yeah. Unfortunately, the collapse doesn't comment out everything. So now, let's actually say we don't want to color our graph blue and red. We will let them handle it in the... Okay. So run, o run away, run like the wind. Uh, there is no... Okay, and I don't need to be console logging this anymore. Okay, there's no, um, there's no freaking graph here. I'm not happy. Oh, is this because I need the stupid, um, CSS bullshit? Um, okay, no, hang on. Um... I 
and I'm almost sure here though I still need to do this this style thing um, because that's how they're drawing the um, they're using the style and it actually has to now say um, okay it has to say dot chart because those are the new divs they're creating they're, they're calling them that so a clever plan and I do I need to put style before anything else I'm almost sure I do um, but let's find out okay that didn't work but I didn't expect it to work because we haven't changed this um, um, oh actually hang on okay so d are they selecting the whole body here uh, because they need to select something that is very close to okay select dot chart um, the problem is I don't know how much of this code they, they want us to keep around here um, I'm gonna see if we can skip over this because I'm not happy mm-hmm okay so I don't know why we're using div elements to create a bar chart that just seems like it's stupid even as a an initial um, project <laughs> I like that I like the intro um, okay so this is an SVG and I do remember that SVG has quite a bit to do with D3 um, okay Okay. Okay. Okay, so we can change the the values that's very javascripty. Ooh. Okay. 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 So far, I'm not getting a great feeling out of this, to be honest. Um. Interesting. Hmm. Not not looking too good here. And it does appear now. I mean, I'm sure D3 is a wonderful program, but it looks like if you wa if you just need something a quick line graph. Well, let's see if there's a line graph in here. That's all I need, man. Um, let's go to our friend Google. And it might be this is too much. To okay. Well, this is this is cool. That's exactly what I want. Um, um, and one thing I dislike, I think I'm going to mention this before, is um, somehow these people who code these one good libraries uh, have decided they're not going to give you a minimal basic example to understand what's happening. So they're going to go through all this bullshit with margins and stuff, none of, none of this that you need. And instead of saying, here's the minimal code that runs so you can understand the part that actually does the work. Uh, this is because, of course, all coders hate you, including me. Um, and But they also hate other coders. So they also hate me, I hate them. So it, it's, very, it's a very sad kind of field. All right, let's see. This is really ugly. There's no like, there's no like line graph of data and it just automatically does all the defaults that you want. And then you can add more stuff if you need to. Um, so I'm unhappy, which probably is not interesting. Okay, so instead of using D3, which has now been declared persona non grata here, 
That means not a person, or maybe not a welcome. I don't know what it means, actually. It's a foreign language. Okay, so now we're going to aim for output we can use with the GNU plot. Um, alternatively, we could try to plot this ourselves using an HTML canvas, uh, which we have done before. But first things first. Um, and we're just we're just going to print the position. We're going to print the um, for right now we're in a console log, but later we actually will actually want to print it. Um, the position of the sun, and which is a very basic sort of thing to want. Um, and we have a function that does it. I'm going to have to check to see where um, when we use it, actually, in script.js. To, to, uh, that's the function we use to determine um, where, where, you know, where the sun is rising and setting and what its right ascension is. Um, is it? Yeah. I'm going to just copy the signature because I have a very short memory. I was going to say that again as a joke, but maybe we will not do that. Okay. All right. So what we want here is sun info with a d value of i, a latitude value of um, let's let's do something sort of 35 is normal. Something sort of normal for right now because we don't we don't want to show the errors yet. We will get there. Um, and I'm pretty sure I've defined a degree by now. Haven't I? God, I hope I have. And the altitude will go ahead and keep it its default zero. We'll keep it for the geometric. So this is the geometric. Um, oh, actually, hang on. Is that what we want? Um. No, I think we want a function even simpler than sun info. Uh, we want the function that sun info calls, which is there we go. That's what we're looking for. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and cut this bit here. Uh, we don't need any of this crap. Um, Now I realize we're redeclaring variables, and I also realize at one point I was like, um, some I got kicked out of Discord for basically saying that you shouldn't declare your variables. Uh, this, you know, you don't have to declare your variables right when you use them. We could declare RA and DEC as being outside of this, and, and then just use them inside. But I'm going to do it this way because I am very inconsistent. Pomodoro time. I'll be back in two and two. Okay, and I'm back. And I just have to do some stuff that's totally irrelevant to what we're doing now, but it's off to do it. Okay. So we have the, let's see. Uh, we want solar right ascension. The x value we want, okay, is we're in the year 2020, and so we have to look at the unix second of the 
Actually, we have to do this from zero. So we need to look at the second, you know, the day, the ith day of 2020. We, I've, I memorized this at one point, but not anymore. So that's that time, and then the second value, number of seconds since uh, UTC, uh, number of seconds since 1970, and then because it's number of days, we're going to do this. Okay. So now we have this is the interpretation we want. We divide. Okay. So this is actually very accurate. I mean, we're going to log it, but this is. Um, This should be giving us exactly what we want. Okay. I don't know why this undefined ke keeps coming up. I think that's actually okay, though. Um, and... Wow. Oh, because I'm doing commas here, that's why. I think. Um, now, of course, I have... What I've forgotten to do is uh, that these are in radians and uh, both are in radians and for the right ascension I do not correct whoa like 42 I do not correct for the fact that you can mod out 2 pi repeatedly um, which is actually you know you don't need to you can always refer to an angle as 370 degrees instead of 10 degrees and that actually might not be an issue for us but it, it is something there so where is the problem going to show up well um, if you want to know what time the sun rises, the right ascension, wait, we know where it is at noon, we need to subtract off the amount of time the sun is up in the sky at a given latitude divided by 2. In fact, that's exactly what we do in sun info. Um, I think, like, literally exactly what we do. Um, oh, sorry, in star info, because it's more generic, but yeah. Um, So that we have here, okay. And so the big thing we compute is a time, and and we have this little. Uh, we we do it in a couple steps here, and that's the the sorry not a time the up time the up time, and and then we divide it by two to get. Uh, actually, this is half the up time that we compute. So this is kind of a bad naming scheme here. And then we um, you know the real up time is twice that. And then we subtract or add it to see when the sun rises and sets. Pretty good system. Of course, the sun's right ascension will change over that period of time also. So it's constantly changing. But we ignore that. We just pretend the sun for a given day has a constant right ascension. I could probably make it more accurate if we didn't do that. But anyway. All right. So what we need here, we're going to copy all of this. And then we'll just, um, and then we'll just uh, suck it all in there. All right, let's go ahead and get it all in there, and then we will, hopefully we'll do something with it. All right, where is it? Damn it. Graph. I keep forgetting what I call my variables, what I call my files. I'm a moron. All right, let's get ahead and get a little space here. Okay, so we figured out the right ascension and declination. The cos val, we're going to take the arc. It's really the arc. Oh, no, this is the value of the cosine. Jesus Christ. Um, and we're going to set alt right now to be zero. Geometric, um, wait. Yeah. For right now, we're going to set uh, alt to be zero. That's geometric. Uh, how long the sun is above uh, the geometric horizon. Okay. So this looks correct. We're going to ignore this error message. Um, and then we're just going to log for right now. Um, yeah, there's a problem with this, and we'll get to it in just a sec. We're just going to log the uptime. Now, the problem, of course, is it, this is going to vary depending on your latitude, which we have not set. So I think we did set it at one point when we were trying to call sun info, but we don't want to do that, so it's going to be 35 degrees, which is where I live. I mean, not the whole meridian. I only take up a small part of it. All right, so if this works, we should be able to see. We'll see that because the first of the year, the sun doesn't stay up that long. It'll get... Um, and I'll be corrected. This, this is two times up time, really. Um, it'll get longer and longer during the, during the uh, summer months. And... Oh... Uh, th this is because I redefined sine, cosine, and tan to be the, the equivalent of their mathematical... Um, in other words, I did this, basically. And I'm going to do it again. And this is probably... 
I don't know what the feeling is in official JavaScript about this. Um, doing this. Um, I don't know if there's a way to in some languages you can extract a functions out of a library so you can use them without having to put the prefix of the library in them. Um, I don't know if JavaScript has a methodology to do that, but uh, this is a workaround. But of course it only works for the functions you want to put here, although you could do like a for i in math um, and then an eval. But I mean that that kind of gets really, really nasty, even though I just am tempted to do it while I was talking about it. All right, sine, cosine, tangent, I think that's all we need. And arc cosine, okay. All righty. So let's see if this uh, these numbers, which I now that I think about it, I probably didn't need to print out all of them. And of course, there is no, there is no uh, scrolling up button. Okay, so they do get longer, 3, 3.5, 3.7, 7, 3 .7 right along, um, you know, June 22nd-ish. Getting shorter again as we go in earlier into the year, and then 2.53. These numbers would actually probably be a lot better if I converted them to from radians to hours. But that's only for our own, uh, only for our viewing. In, if we want to use them mathematically, radians is exactly the correct way to do it. Um, so in radians, we have to convert, um, uh, it's 24 hours in a radian. Nope, it's 12 hours in a radian. It's 24 hours in two radians. So, nope, it is math capital pi. And again, this is another case where you really, really want to just say math.pi equals math pi. Okay, nine hours of, s is that correct? That I think we've got more than that, but anyway. 10, we'll have 14 up here at some point. Yep, 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 yep. Looks good. Okay. So how is all this going to be a problem for us? Um, well, so we're just going to compute the rise time of the sun. And do I want to actually print it? I don't think I can print it because I don't have a... Um, I don't have uh, anything con connected to my HTML right now. Uh, but we can certainly return it. Um, as HTML and then print it. Although I'm wondering if, oh, bad things have happened. Um, I wonder if I can do a control A here. No, I was hoping we'd, we'd copy this and shove it into, um, into a GNU plot. But apparently we cannot. Um, okay. So what we want to do here is, okay, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and now I want to be careful here. We everything is in radians up to this point, um, so we want the day, and the sun's rising time is going to be R A minus uptime. Uh, that's it. This is all in radians, except I obviously is in days, um, and the problem. Well, this is not going to be a problem here because um, because we're at thirty five. The sun really does rise later every day. Um, now the problem here, of course, is going to be in just a second. Uh, this is not a great way to uh, to graph this information. Um, so I'm really, really tempted to um, to bring in a canvas and just graph it on the canvas. Uh, ah. But I'm also really tempted to just feed this shit to GNU plot. Now I'm tempted to see if there's a GNU plot for JavaScript. Uh, oh, there might be using mscripted. I don't even know what the hell that is. Um. So maybe I'm actually looking for gnuplot.js, maybe? And I realize that some of these links may go there, but let's go ahead and search for it correctly. Not that piece of shit. That. So this is just an API. We want this, I think. It might be the same thing. Okay. Um... 
I'm already unhappy because we have this install M script in whatever the fuck that is. Um, oh, 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 oh. Too many big words there. Um, okay, so it looks like Gmootplot can do something with uh, HTML canvas, which is very nice. Um, now the nice question would be how the frick do we use it? And I guess the, uh, the, the obvious sort of answer would be let's do a view source. Oh. Um, okay. This is great if we could put this crap into, uh, into JavaScript. Um, so let's see how they're doing this magic. Canvas math. Okay, GNU plot. Common. Um, well, th these look like they're pretty um, interesting looking libraries. Interestingly, there is no GNU plot.js. It's always GNU plot common. All right, well, let's, let's, let's look at these libraries here. Um, GNU plot mouse. Okay, so let's, let's see what this is. Uh, let's see. Shared routines for GNU plots HTML canvas terminal driver. That does not help me any. I mean, there's a temptation just to load these suckers in and see what the hell happens. Um, oh, npm. Now again, npm is server side, but I think you know you can sometimes get it to be. I don't want them. Um, a node GNU plot, so a thin wrapper around GNU plot for Node.js. Um, hmm. And the problem here is it looks like they're going to print out to something which we cannot really do because this is not Node. So let's do this. Let's look for JS new plot client side library. Um, okay, and this is actually looks like um, da 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 da. Um, Fought Raphael, Jesus Christ. Um, and I'm te I've heard of Raphael before, so I'm tempted to look at it. Plus, it's the name of a mutant ninja turtle. Uh, it, unless you put two dots around it, in which case it's just stupid. All right, let's see. God damn. I mean, just... Okay. So this is what... Raphael can do. Um, see, the problem is none of these do uh, automatic comp. I'm sure that they somewhere they do automatic computation of boundaries, and uh, you know how to how to design the x and y axes so they look nice. Blah blah blah. But let's see. Um, not what I'm looking for. And I still haven't found. Okay. Mm. Okay. As of May 2009. Well, I think we're a little bit beyond that. I want to find the live version on. Oh, this is the live version on Git. This is not a mirror. Okay. Okay, JavaScript support for SVG hypertext font properties. Not what I'm looking for. Um, okay, this is not what I really want either. Um, I guess what I'm looking for is the GNU plot HTML driver. I think that's what I'm looking for. Um, 
Okay, well this is good that we have a little uh, FAQ here. Um, okay, all of these went in HTML. Page? Oh, God! Man, they're gonna kill us on this one. All right, let's go to the table of contents. Um, da, 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 text formatting. There we go. Now, of course, it's possible that uh, GNU plot can output HTML, but that doesn't help us any. We actually wanted to take HTML and do stuff with it. Um, so I'm getting disheartened now, which is bad because I have a weak heart to begin with. Um, all right. There's really no reason not to learn Raphael. Well, ipso facto. See, the this is... Oh, by webify.pl. So it looks like they're doing some crap on the server side to get all this crap. I think. Um, okay. Uh, so we're going to go a little bit crazy here. We're going to go for um, easy JavaScript plotting. I don't know if I need the word library after it, but I'm going to put it there. Easy to use JS libraries, and again, that's an ad, so they're not easy. Um, plotly. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going deep into the rabbit hole here. Uh, we started with something that was like, just use D3 because it's well known. Um, now we're deep into the boonies. Boondocks, boonies. Um... Um, all right, let's look at the line charts. That's what we want. Um, let's see, that looks pretty freaking nice. That is what I want. Um, Okay, this is what I want. Let's go ahead and um, do a couple of things here. One, let's see if we can grab Plotly. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're back. Okay. Well, damn, this is this is the kind of thing that, you know, D3 should, if it can do this, this is, should be their advertising page. All right, so let's go back over to Replit here. See if we can find Plotly. If we can't, we can actually, nice. And again, I don't know why I do this, because it's actually, there's nothing useful here, because we're going to actually download it uh, directly. And to get all the magic to work correctly, 
I have to put it here before I can tell Xterm to get Plotly. Then we copy it. Is that really that big? Oh, well, whatever. All right, and then we're going to upload Plotly to Replit. I'd want to keep all the other crap. I mean, at some point, if space becomes an issue, we can get rid of the libraries we're not using. But for now, we'll just keep this project with all the libraries. OK, so now I can just say um, plotly.min.js. OK. And I guess we'll keep this da 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 da. And now, um, we have a ton of crap we're not going to be using, but that's okay. And so over here, um, let's go ahead and paste the example code. I'm actually sort of curious to see how that works. Excuse me. So if this just works as is, I would be very happy. I think I probably need however, to create a div tag to put it in. But aside from that, it should be very easy. And I'm going to call this, do I, I must have a graph data tag, right? Whoa. This is bitchin'. So if there's anyone out there, I, I realize there isn't, who thinks J D3 can do this this quickly and easily, well, let me know. All righty. Gorgeous. Um, I guess at this point I am going to go ahead and save GitHub, download this as a zip, and just GitHub it for the sake of GitHubbing it. I don't even know where these Gits go. I mean... Oh, wow. Just for the F of it. Um... And I do have this tendency to push code before I make big changes to it uh, rather than after, but I guess that's that's what it is. Okay, I do want to keep these around as examples. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to define two arrays. Uh, one, oh actually I think we can get away with, uh, can't we? Okay, so I wonder if we can actually do this with this one array since the x values increase like that. So apparently the, the the worst you can make it. The ooh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um these are not scatter plots. I mean I'm not gonna hold that against them, but but they're not scatter plots. Okay. So over here we're gonna say we need an array called rises, which is gonna hold the rise time. And Oh, do I... Okay, I guess they do zero start-based counting, so zero is fine here. And then we're going to say um, rises. God, again, this is the stupid thing about... Uh, is it array push? Um, oh, you know what? Actually, I can just say rises um, i equals ra minus uptime. So that, that works out pretty nicely. We don't need to console log this anymore. And now, gosh willing, we can actually do something like, um, I'll just copy this, but then we can actually get a very nice looking graph of the, right at the rise time at latitude 35. And here we'll just say, um, y is rises. What would happen if we don't specify the type? Let's just actually do that. Okay, hang on. That doesn't actually plot it, does it, though? And I'm not sure I used the example correctly. By the way, we don't want this plot any of trace 1 or trace 2, so we are going to actually remove it from there. New plot under graph for uh, trace, trace 2. So if this works, I will be very, very happy. Something is quite wrong. Something is not right. Let's see. Um, I 
I love this shit. And I know it's wrong, actually. Um, okay, uh, let's see. So the data has got to be, it could be, I assume you can just do, um, am I redefining trace too? I am. That is not a good thing. Oh, still some, not happy. Okay. So GG is an object whose Y value is an array. And that matches, has no type though. Maybe that's what's unhappy about. So I went a little bit too far in trying to make it instant. Now it's a little bit slow, I've noticed. Whoa, 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 whoa something's very wrong now. Just that. Uh, wait, new plot, graph, gg, type, scatter, uh, that is not the correct way to specify options. You need to put them in a little object. Okay, now. Uh, still not happy about something. 46.8. Graph. Um. Hmm. Alrighty, let's go ahead and put back the line, which I should have actually just commented out. Um, new plot. Uh, data type scatter. So this does. You are correct. I meant to put it in quotes. Oh, I have really broken this. Oh, actually, hang on. I don't mean that. I mean data. Uh, no, I mean none of this. I mean find the uh, the graph part of my uh, the graph div tag and do this. Yeah, and maybe if I spelled it correctly, that would help. Okay, no error messages, and no graph. So, not great. Um, of course, I do probably need to get rid of this one, because this one would either overwrite or just kind of F with the other one. Let's see if this works. Oh, it did work. Okay, awesome. All right, so we're fine here. Uh, for some reason, we can just print one of these suckers, right? Awesome. And now the question is, I'm gonna be a little bit careful here. Um, I can't obviously say var trace one, but I can't say trace one. What happens if you don't give it a type? What happens if you're just an effing moron and you do this? Will this still plot? It still will plot. Okay. Um. So the thing that plot lead new plot needs is a place to put the graph, and then data, which should be of the form, an array of objects. I'm pretty sure this will not work. You cannot make data an actual object. It has to be an array of objects. So let's see what this does. Yeah, that's where we get... That's where it didn't like it. Your data must be an array of objects. It cannot be simply an object. So that that's fine. Um, new plot. Graph is where I want you to put it. And it's going to be the array that consists of one element, which is an object that has one element, and I think this is the minimalist possible way of getting this to work. Motherfucker. I mean, yeah, that's what I expected. Uh, now, so this is pretty much exactly correct. 
you'll notice that the sunrise time is um, is increasing all the time, but not really very steadily, not like the right ascension itself is increasing. Now there's a tendency here, in fact there's a very good tendency here. So this is the VAR rise, now we want the VAR uh, now I wonder if I can do like Y1, Y2, Y3, because I want to sort of plot it against the uh, right ascension itself. Um, but I think we can do this. I think we can do this. Now at some point I'm going to want to do it like more fancy, but the fact that we can plot from within JavaScript is, is a real... I mean, <laughs> that I can plot from within JavaScript. You, you've always been able to do that. I'm, I'm a moron. Um, the fact that I can plot from JavaScript now is very, very useful. So now, of course, the question is that 35 degrees, we're already seeing that this is not a, you know, this is an increasing function, but there's clearly some issues here. And we're also going to now be very, very bold and do this. Um, make sure it still runs. Yep. And, and latitude does not need to be set here because it is actually constant for these. So we will say auto format. And also we will take this to another page. Oh, that's much better. So it appears to automatically size itself. So in this case, just go screw yourself there. All right, what happens at 40 degrees? To be honest, I don't think it's going to be that much better, but um, still pretty smooth increase. Let's go to 45. Now I think at 45, we'll start seeing some issues. Um, hopefully we're uh, getting updated here, but okay. So at 45, definitely right around the spring equinox, we're seeing some issues. Unless, well let's go ahead and go to 50. God, I certainly hope that every time I do this, I'm actually changing something. I'm beginning to worry that I'm not. Let's see. I guess I am, huh? Because this is just, uh, this is just the same thing, actually, just in a different, um, alrighty. If I don't see something at 55, I'm going to be convinced something is wrong. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at this graph over here and see how it compares to the one that we're looking at. Oh, do I need to do a run every time? Am I... Am I? But then... Um... That does not look... Okay. So hopefully what's wrong is just something's wrong here because we just had a really narrow uh, fit for it earlier. There we go. So it looks like, ta-da, big bump and up. And over here it looks like not that because I'm stretching it out a bit. Okay. So I'm getting suspicious now. We're getting close to the point where there's a midnight sun and we should get really different results. getting annoyed. Oh, there we go. So at 65 degrees latitude, we finally see that the sun rises at nearly constant sidereal time for the first, that actually seems like a really strange thing though, for the first half of the year? That might be exactly where um, where the right ascensions increase and the length of days increase kind of uh, match each other. So that's actually kind of cool. Um, if true, it's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, this is actually a really nice, very slow increase here. I'm going to go ahead and do it negative 65 and we should see the same thing except this time it'll be the um, It'll be the, the southern, it'll be the la latter part of the year that has the flatness. Okay, okay, very cool. And again, this is sort of a double regular increase to make up for this flatness because it still has to go over 24 hours, but um, let's see. So 65 is very close to the, um, to the Arctic Circle. 66 is even closer, obviously. Wow. 
it did not occur to me this line would be totally flat once you hit the Arctic Circle. And now if we go beyond the Arctic Circle, we're going to have two problems. One is the sun doesn't set every day, and the other is we should now finally see some, some st steepness. Yep, decrease, gap when the sun doesn't rise at all, and then we're back to the sun rising and going up steadily. So that is that is good stuff there. That is that is why we're having this problem. Um, that I did not actually expect that to happen. This is interesting. Um, so here, what we're seeing here is theoretically. Is there actually there's still no place where the the the, the sun rises at the same R A twice? Let me let me go back to sixty five here. This is that's going too far there, I think. Um interesting. Now of course by the way, uh this value up here and this value up here are essentially the same because we're not factoring out two pi. We could but we're not doing that right now, um, and that's why we're getting this constant increase in uh, right ascension, uh, right ascension rising time. Um, so if we were to continue this over more than a year, you would see this line would flatten out again, and then sort of rise up again. And you could sort of see it flattening right here. It's kind of difficult to see. This is the uh, the winter solstice right here, and this is the. Uh, um, this right here is roughly the vernal equinox, and this right here, where it sort of starts to resume its upward flow, is the uh, is the summer equinox. I guess it's actually closer to uh, a little bit slower than that, right there. Okay. Interesting, interesting. So what have we learned? Um, probably nothing. Okay. So what we've learned now is we've learned. Um, apparently, there is no case where we can have it happen the same. R A twice, but you can, you can get it to where it is very, very flat. Oh, this is still increasing though, so this doesn't, this is not incorrect here. So we actually, I think we actually need a case where it is, um, it has to be above the Arctic Circle to, f to fail. And here, yeah, I think it flatlines if we were to actually do it right at the Arctic Circle, although we have to adjust for the 34 minutes of refraction that we allow. Oh, actually, hang on. Here we're doing it at. Um, here we're doing it with an altitude of zero, which also we could move out of here. Um, all right, Pomodoro back in two and two. Okay, and we are back, kind of. Okay. Alrighty, by the way, this isn't updating because uh, I have to hit run to get this one to update. The other one I keep reloading so it does update. So now what if the, well, let's go ahead and make sure this is still okay. So now what if we're looking for uh, solar rising time at twilight? That's minus six degrees. And I get the feeling we're going to break this now. Yeah. 
And in this case, it does look like it can be two times when a star is at the same, you know, when the sun is rising at the same right ascension. Um, at the same right ascension time, and therefore it's theoretically possible that a star uh, could also uh, be rising at the same time as the sun twice. Uh, and we had a very flat sort of, I think here if we did like 59 degrees, um, we would see a very, very flat and then a very big jump there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is kind of nice. Um, are these all from, I guess these are all from the uh, Plotly library, which... Uh, unless I'm misunderstanding, it does not get the uh, the do it deserves. Whoa! So if I could have zoomed in here, zoom in right there. Um, nope, not what I meant to do. Refit grapho. Okay, reset axes. Oh, that didn't do anything. Anyway. Um, so I think we found the issue. So now the question is, how do we, we fix the issue? And the answer to that is actually pretty boring. Uh, instead of doing this binary, instead of doing this binary search here, where we just look for at zero and we're very clever, thinking it's always going to increase, uh, we can just go from like we can just do a for loop, basically, and uh, see where the sun is. Uh, you know, where it crosses zero, basically, what, what we're looking for. Uh, and then return, um, you know, obviously if it crosses zero twice, crosses it below and back up, within a day, we're not going to catch that. But then we can return that if it, you know, stays, you know, if it becomes, uh, goes down for more than a day, it goes below zero for more than a day, comes back up, we can return multiple values. Uh, so that would be the goal here, would be to return multiple values. Um, and then we don't really need a binary search. Binary search is clever, but, and it's faster, but to be honest, um, because we're only calculating it for one star at a time, it's really not relevant. It's really not going to give us that much of a speed up. So, um, so uh, it's very clever, but uh, you know. And so the other thing we have to look out for is if we get multiple results back, which we, we believe is possible, we do need to be able to print all those results. We still want to check to see that um, the result or results we get back, well, let's see. We, if we're careful, we don't have to do error checking. Um, and I guess we could return no days as a result. If I don't think that can ever happen. Um, I think the sun's rising time at every latitude, as to even 90 degrees, at some point has to be equal to a, a, to a given right ascension for a star's rising time. Okay, so... Um, we kind of want to enhance our answer with some of these graphs, but I don't know if I really want to do that. I want to say that I want to do that, though. Um, and basically showed that, you know, the sun, when you're far north, the sun kind of does a little bit of funny stuff there. And let me see if at 60, the north, the, the, the um, it's 90 minus 23 and a half degrees, roughly speaking, because 23 and a half is the inclination of the ecliptic, so it's about 66.5. So this will get us up to 66 because we're talking about twilight now. Um, it still increases more than I think it should. Um, let's try 61. Let's see what that, how you do with that. Yeah, and at 61 there are times when the, the you know if you're 61 degrees, there are times when you will never get fully dark. Um, so interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, let's go back to our README stream. See what we have. This is, by the way, wh where you solve the interesting part of the problem, um, and you don't bother to solve the, uh, the, the actual difficult part of the problem. Um, so let me think here. Um, okay. And the other question is, I think that um, the fact that the right, I mean, the fact that it looks so, you know, the function looks so strange, uh, even if we didn't, you know, even if we hadn't done an interpolation and then gone from there, I think it, it kind of says there might not be a really great solution to this problem. 
a uh, closed form solution to this problem. Okay. Um, we've gotten quite far on constellation boundaries last time. Uh, and I'm kind of bored of this. We'll come back to this. Uh, great. My stream title will once again be completely inaccurate. I think I can change it while we're streaming, can't I? Um, but I think I would prefer to have it be totally uh, inaccurate. So let's keep going. All right, so let's go back to constellations. I'm, I'm bored of this, I'll be, I'm, I'm being honest here. Um, so I'm not going to fix it right now. Uh, this isn't REPL, by the way, so if somebody else, some other kind soul wants to come and fix it, go right ahead. Um, I will go ahead and download this version. I will push it to Git, so if someone wants to fix it in Git instead of in, in um, REPL, that's fine too. Show it be bad. Okay, and so then we could um, kind of, uh, I'm not really happy with this, I'm, and to be honest, I'm just, it's just ugly. Uh, the, the function can be, you know, not, not, the, not the solar right ascension rising time, but the, the internally the function that we're looking for uh, can be uh, negative more, you know, can cross the zero line more than once. Um, and I, th I think it's two times as the max, but now I'm not even sure about that. Um, and the fact that it can be undefined, which I sort of knew was going to happen, um, because when, when the sun is not doesn't rise, obviously, no star rises with it. Um, it's still ugly. Still not, not very happy about that. So now, now that I've whined some more, let's go back to BC Const... There we are. Wow, that's the one that's right there. Okay. Um... Yeah, this is where I copied the, the hideous array here, and we were probably going to get rid of the um, and Andromeda, but that we can do that later. That's, that's not a huge deal. So the idea here was we were going to, um, previously on the stream, uh, we were going to look at all the sort of little chunks um, that could, that, you know, that, constantly, that something could be in, um, and then we were going to say over here, um, let me run this real quick because I don't remember if the right ascensions were in hours or if they were in um, in degrees. Although, I mean, technically we can just look that up here real quick. Um, see so constellations and da -da. I forget which one we're using, but it, well, it might matter actually. Hang on. So we are using Jesus Christ bound 18.txt um, Oh, we are using hours. I'll be damned. We're using hours for right ascension and uh, degrees for declination, so the m times 3600 is absolutely correct. Okay, so what we're looking now is the little boundary. Uh, nope, this is actually just assigning it. Over here, we go through the little chunks of right ascension and declination. Um, and that is going to be... Mm, can we multiply? Oh, okay. In theory, we've got to sign this more cleverly, but I think maybe that's going too far. Okay. And so now what we're going to try to do is... Actually, <laughs> that was pretty useless. Um, I don't even think we have a const uh, array, array anymore, do we? Uh, we do. We don't do anything with it, though. So anyway, all right. So let's go ahead and run this, and just to get a quick idea of what we're doing. Oh wow. Okay. So the RA is okay. So th this is okay. Um, so I was hoping to create sort of a graph that we could use to see what the methodology is here. Um, and I'm also hoping that the, the coordinates, the way they give them here, uh, actually are, um, you can join them together without crossing over the 24-0 line. Uh, because presumably they, they are created for that purpose of actually finding out where things are. And obviously, in real life, 24 and 0 are not equal. They only are in terms of 24 hours is equal to 0 hours for right ascension. So... Um, okay, so what I want to do here 
is I want to print out um, you know what maybe we can just find a constellation boundary map online and mess with that map and this is sort of the canonical one and it presumably it's an SVG which means you can make it that's not at all where I wanted to go Okay, that just like totally went nowhere. Um, oh, I know this guy. He's actually a really nice guy. I don't know why I said that, but all right, let's go ahead and go here. We're apparently not going to get. Ooh. Okay, apparently someone has outdone me. All right, here we go. Now, it looks like there's actually probably a better solution <laughs> somewhere. Anyway, um, so the idea here is if we're at any point... Um, we go down until we find this, you know, some place, some declination where the right ascension, you know, where there's a cross line with the right ascension. Um, and presumably... That will tell us, and if we know the bottom line, and we know the uh, that'll tell us what uh, constellation we're in. And it it um, it looks like it's kind of a hoax because okay, let's say we start over here, go down here, find this line. Um, no, I guess for this RA, and you know we, we go down. We this is the line that will stop us. This is the bottom border of Hercules here. Um, but can it have multiple b bottom boundaries? So can we go here, have this? Um, I guess if you're here, this is a bottom boundary of Hercules. If you're over here, or you know, wherever this gets ugly, over here and you go down, this is another bottom boundary. So I guess, um, man, simply starting from where you are, going down until you hit a boundary because you can't you can't leave the constellation without hitting a boundary and if you hit this boundary and it's you can just say what con you know this is the lower boundary of what constellation that's the constellation I was in except maybe for octans which is just weird um, I'm now actually tempted to see um, this is the Wikipedia um, seriously SVG file, um, which in theory, um, which in theory, what the hell? That really is not nice. I was hoping we'd zoom in or something. Can we do that? Control plus? And in theory, we should not see pixel. Whoa! All right, we don't see pixelation. This is an SVG, so when we magnify it, it should not lose uh, resolution. Okay. So it looks like. And I also just realized if we could convert this to a PNG, and each of these now it looks like each of these colors is not different. Plus they have um, uh, plus they have uh, text written on them, so we can't use this as our magic. Okay. Hmm. Okay. And once again, I'm trying to find out the reason I'm humming and hoeing here is I'm hoeing. I'm hoeing, man. I need to sell it. Um, because now I'm wondering if I, I mean, if I knew these boundaries, could I find, you know, could I get, do this without having to go through this secondary uh, data set. Um, and the big problem here is that some of the, you know, the clockwise versus non-clockwise thing. Um, all right. And I think I'm happy enough to not have to do that. Um, okay. So now that we have a point, let's go ahead and actually define our point here. 
Um, our point. Okay, so this is this is cool. This is good. Um, we don't actually need the constellation anymore. We'll keep it, but we don't need it. Um, so the R we want to test. Okay. Is the between the two between? Okay, let's see. So, oh no, I'm sorry. This is where we just put them in the arrays. This is where we want them. Okay. So the array we want to test is in between uh, the you know the previous RA and the current one. In other words, sort of in the middle of the box that we're looking at. Um, so it's this plus this over two. And same for the declination. Okay. Is that it is dex. Ant and deck. I don't, I do I do know who they are, but I uh, didn't for a long time. Okay. Okay. So now we need to write a function. I mean we could do it just in here, but it's easier to write a function that given a specific array and deck um, determines the constellation using the, the, the hard-coded values. Um, and because it uses hard-coded values, it is not a good general function. Okay. Um, um, actually... Oh, you know, actually we're not using bound 18 anymore, we're just using these boundaries, so... Um, so this is not quite correct. Um, so this entire little place where we open files and stuff is no longer necessary. Uh, we will, however, we will, however, abuse Perl's commenting function, documentation thing, to do that. Call it old code, put it away. Okay, so now we're going to say the, to determine the, the unique RAs and stuff, uh, we're going to say for, well, we're going to kind of suck down this array four elements at a time. And there's more than one way to do that. I'm trying to find a way that's kind of useful. Um, One way is just to sort of uh, shift off the four left elements of the array each time and then assign them to variables. Uh, let's, we might, well, let's try that, see what happens. Okay, a Pomodoro, back in two and two. And we're back. And I apparently touched something that I shouldn't have touched. I mean, in terms of the mouse. Um, and I got a little bit of a cut and paste situation. That's okay. Okay. So now... Oh, undo, undo. That was, I think, just a space, though. Yeah. Okay. So now... Oh, this is, I'm going to regret this. So it's right ascension. No. Crap, what is it? 
Um, let's go move our friend console.c, the one I'm stealing all this stuff from, um, into um, into the git just for ref because I'm using it as a reference here. And see, what are these four element arrays here? Oh yeah, they're the. Um, here we go. Uh, lower right ascension, upper right ascension, lower declination, and then simply uh, the constellation number, which is indexed somewhere else. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, this will probably confuse people, but you know, that's the goal. Uh, because we're using it for reference, and that, that is going to be important. Okay, so this is going to be right, okay, lower right, upper right, lower deck. You don't need an upper deck, although you could do it, but that would make the file bigger, I think, is why they're not doing it. Um, so lower RA, um, oh, come on, RA min, RA max, deck min, const equals, I think I'll just leave it like that, um, equals shift bounds for, uh, and this may be the most horrible coding um, ever. Um, the theory is we're going to eventually exhaust the list if we do this. And let's see if that works. Cool. Now I'm going to try something here, CD dot, and see if that helps. Damn. Okay. It's because I, I undid and redid the um, the secure shell mount. And let's go ahead and do this. And of course, the code will not compile now. Let's see what do I have here. Um, that should be closed. This should be closed. This should be closed. Um, line 60 to end of file. Okay, so, oh yeah, because I'm not actually, haven't written this code yet. I do need to close this off. Okay. Not in a real reference at line 11, so I cannot do this. I think JavaScript calls this a destructuring assignment. Um, uh, now, of course, this is not the right way to do it, so I'm going to make it worse by doing this. I'm turning the shift into an array reference. It didn't work, though. Okay. And clearly this is... Um, God damn it. Stop. I need to stop myself from this. No, okay. No. It was a bad idea to begin with. Uh, what we do want to do is we want to uh, say for dollar sign i equals zero, uh, dollar sign less than dollar sign num bounds that is the number of elements in the array plus uh, minus one, but I think we're okay because we're starting with zero, but divided by four because we're going to suck them down four at a time. And then our elements are going to be, I think in this case, ooh, let's see. Um, I think if you use splice, we can, we can get away with this. Um, and boy, I'm probably, that's not probably going to work either. Whoa. I mean, yeah, that's what I expected, of course. Um, I'm clearly off by one here somehow, but I'm okay with that. Let's see, um, splice I bounds, maybe I better check out how, uh, splice works. Sometimes it's useful to know how the functions you, okay. Um, oh, no, 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 that's not what I want. I don't want that at all. I want to get those elements without 
changing them. I want the anti-splice. Shift, unshift. Um, oh, actually, I, I forgot. I don't need to do any of that. This is a, this is a pearlism. Uh, you can do... That should suck out the for the you know the four elements between these two two conditions, or it worked. Okay, now for some reason, yeah, because of course what I mean is four times i to four times i plus three, because I'm I'm jumping by fours here. So let's see what this does. Beautiful, gorgeous, beautiful, 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 gorgeous, and it even ends with the fifty-eight that ends the array. Gorgeous. Okay. Um, so I still need, do I have an RA still defined here? No, I do not. Okay, so we were, this is just to capture the possible different right ascensions and declinations. Uh, and then we sort them and then we start looking at every possible combination of the two. So, I don't know if this is actually ramen. <laughs> it's funny. To be honest, I'm not sure this is any better than just uh, writing out the array elements instead of just doing this. Um, Deckman. Now, it is different. Deckman, we're only going to look at one, the lower boundary. I'm hoping somewhere, somewhere someone somewhere somehow has created a lower boundary of minus 90 degrees for, because otherwise we'll, 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 th we'll thrash. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so these are the values that are right in the middle of the blob that we're looking at. And let's go ahead and and they're multiplied by 3600, so they're in they're not really in seconds because th we're multiplying the hours by 3600, which gives us some weird unit of time, weird unit of. Okay, not looking too great here because they're all the same. That's not good at all. Okay. Um. Yeah, it would be useful if I actually used my second index here. God damn it. Okay, yeah, this looks like a... Oh, shoot, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, we're good. Okay, so this is the middle point that we're looking to find the uh, constellation for. Um, kind of curious as to how many... Um, how many rows... I think it's going to be like, yeah, it's going to be small enough that we can put these into like a little binary file. <sighs> okay. Now we're going to do a fine constellation. And for right now we're just going to call it not and not you know we'll, we'll have the we'll have the function itself debug and tell us what, what's going on. Alrighty. Um, find deck lower than though. So we need to find a declination that's lower than the one we're at that has an RA that crosses, um, that crosses uh, the RA of this uh, point that we're looking at. In other words, the, uh, the, the, the line, the min RA to the max RA, uh, it, you know, the RA is between that. That seems really ugly. I wonder if there's something better we can do there. Um, well, there might be actually. We can look at all the RAs and see um, this, it might just be reversing the problem. We can look at all the RAs and see which ones this one's between, um, and then look to see if there is a, what the lowest declination is, 
there. Will that work? I think that's just reversing the problem. I don't think that actually helps anything. Um, hmm. Um, and honestly, I don't even think we're using the, oh, uh, no, we are. Um, yeah, we actually do need to use the constellation name here because we're no longer getting it from bound 18, but there might be a bigger problem. Um, we're not recording the, the cross of RA min, RA max, and deck min. That's that's what we actually need to record. Um, so we need to say basically a declination this RA crosses at this. And that we can do that using a three dimensional hash, which I want to do it that way because it it's hideously ugly and beautiful at the same time. Um, but as you can guess from my voice slowing down, I'm an idiot. Yeah, okay, one hour, 45 minutes of streaming so far, and I think I'm going to call it for now. Thank you for watching the stream. I do hope to be back later today.